of the Penguins, Letterman, and Eyewitness News this morning all have in common? Look out, Loretta. They're always taking the lead on KDKA TV, too. You gotta be here to believe it. Live at 7, the Pennsylvania Lottery, only on KDKA TV, too. Get ready for another star-studded lifestyle. Your VIP adventure into the lives and loves of today's lucky winners who really know how to enjoy all the great things of life. is Robin Leach, who circles the world to uncover the stories people will never stop talking about. On this glittering edition, Joan Collins' sexy beauty secret. You won't believe how an English rose stays looking so good. Riding high on a career that just keeps on getting better, Joan reveals how she stays a winner without really trying. The NBA superstar who came out of Africa to court undreamed of success as a stateside sports hero and to the incredible world of Hakeem Olajuwon. Hear his amazing plan for the future and meet the little lady who won the heart of a gentle giant. The wedding that could only have taken place in the USA. The bride, a Texas beauty who met him on a blind date. The groom, a former homeless man who scavenged in garbage for redeemable cans. Now a multimillionaire, he threw the ultimate extravaganza, proving for all time that living well really is the best revenge. Rain or shine, he's the weatherman who says, good morning, America. Now see what goes on behind the cameras, planned and unplanned. Get ready to call the shots on Mother Nature with early bird Spencer Christian. Entertainer Entrepreneurs, a bottom-line bulletin on the celebrity buy-up of America. From restaurants and bars to hotels and casinos, wealthy stars are raking in even more millions as show business takes a bite out of big business. These incredible stories and much, much more when Lifestyle returns in a moment. Stay with us. She has what the French call a certain je ne sais quoi. It's a look that could make chess masters defect and sailors jump ship. A devastating combination of smart style and smoldering sexuality. Just when you think you've got her number, she'll blow you away with the wink of an eye. Like fine wine that just keeps getting better with age, Joan Collins has clearly discovered the secret of looking great. She was titillating in her 20s, enthralling in her 30s, fantastic in her 40s, and utterly fabulous in her 50s. Stunningly sexy as she faces a new decade, the English Rose has penned the surefire beauty secrets of a lifetime. Lesson number one, contrary to the song, it's not only skin deep. In that book, I talk about being beautiful, which is not just from the outside. It is totally comes from the inside, and it totally comes from how you feel about yourself in here and up there. I have been asked for the past, God knows how many years, decade, really, my secrets. It's amazing how many people are really interested in this, and so I started writing down things. I started writing down a bit of my philosophy, and I realized um, that a lot of my philosophy about beauty was something that uh, women could use. Lesson number two. The only people who really believe that men age better than women are, well, men. Joan takes no prisoners trouncing such sexist cliches. Most men do not grow old with grace and dignity. First of all, lots of men lose their hair, which women don't do, and get big beer bellies, which women don't do. And I think in my book, I try to help women by saying that every age has its beauty and every age has the good things about it and you cannot be Claudia Schiffer. Most 22-year-olds aren't Claudia Schiffer in any case. Nobody can look like those models. Girls of the same age don't look like them. So you have to be happy with what you are, who you are, and what you have, and you have to make the best of it. Best of all, when it comes to diet, Joan tells it like it is. Yep, she loves to eat. Preferably in the world's finest restaurants and never from the low-cow menu. And no, she's not passionate about exercise. To her, it's just a necessary evil. I don't want to wear out my body. I just want to do the minimum, really, because I don't particularly like exercise. 
and I want the minimum to work for the maximum effect. And I think that through the years I've found that out. So I do not grunt and strain and stress. I really don't. I do my hour every two or three days, and sometimes I'm very bad, and I don't. And I go away and eat pate de foie gras and drink crew and don't bother about exercise. At a girl, my kind of woman, always has been, always will be. Proof of the pudding is the way she looked in nearly 60 movies before a super producer cast her in a television role that would cap a career. Joan gave life to the quintessential bitch. Men wanted Alexis and women wanted to be like Alexis. Embodying the excessive 80s, Dynasty turned its most talked about star into a powerhouse. Joan makes no apologies for such pre-Carrington performances as her 50s debut in Land of the Pharaohs. I think that there are very few actors, very, very few, who have only, who have said, I will only do the script by Ingmar Bergman or Fred Zinnemann. You can't do that if you're a working actor. If that's what you make your living by, you have to often do lots of things that aren't so good. As long as you're working, I luckily don't have to do that anymore, but I paid my dues. Still airing in reruns from Vienna to Vladivostok, Dynasty's incredible nine-year run brought Joan a family of friends and more. It allowed her to live like a Carrington in real life, completely with a Beverly Hills mega mansion. This house is a house that I bought just a year or two after Dynasty started. And to me, it epitomized the style and the over-the-top opulence of that time. It's a royal lifestyle to which the famous house, I think. It's very white, it's very plush, it's very sort of 1930s movie star. It's got a beautiful swimming pool, it's got fountains. And it's got the world's biggest bedroom, and definitely the world's most enormous closet, which I'm not going to let you see, because it's a mess. It's got a lot of art deco. The bar is beautiful. I designed the bar myself. In tune with the no-nonsense 90s, Joan believes that less is more. She's put her statement to conspicuous consumption on the market. You do say goodbye to a certain amount of good memories, but I don't think that I'll be crying because it's just, you know, the end of one chapter and another chapter will hopefully begin. I don't think you can hang on to memories. It's not my style. Her preferred home base is London, where she grew up the daughter of a showbiz agent. The core blimey kid has come full circle to find true love in her own backyard. She shares a love nest in the city with Robin. No, not me, darn it. A dashing entrepreneur who won her heart with a blueprint for happiness. Between making new movies with a decidedly comedic flair, Joan sojourns at her villa on the French Riviera. As the queen of the Côte d'Azur, she could spend all her time on the party circuit. Instead, she writes. Her beauty book, titled Secrets, is her fourth. Others include a kiss-and-tell autobiography, an equally revealing photo collection, and a sizzling romance novels. I love writing. I really do. I've been writing all my life. I've got suitcases full of essays and stories and half-finished novels and observations that I've made since I was 12. It's something that I have always done and I will always continue to do. And if I get published, I get published. If I don't, I'll still write anyway, because I like it. Joan has also written a book on how to succeed in business. A mighty marketing mogul, she first launched a hit line of saucy lingerie. A nose for success next led her to develop a signature fragrance. Then, with 2020 vision, came the blockbuster. My glasses, which are the Joan Collins I wear, have been I just won this year for the third or fourth year in a row the best eyeglasses for women in America. Wealthy beyond her wildest dreams, the star with a license to thrill can afford to indulge herself as the beauty with an eye for beauty. I think it's important to me to be able to really enjoy every second of every day. If that means that sometimes I'm working as an actress, sometimes I'm writing, sometimes I'm going to a party, sometimes I'm um, sending money or d being involved with a charity, uh, then I think that's what I like to do. I've always been multifaceted. I don't stop and consider how lucky I am, and I don't necessarily say that. What I do is that I had an upbringing in which I was told very clearly that effort breeds success or fulfillment. 
and uh, you don't get anything unless you work for it. Joan Collins. That's why, that's why the lady is a van. Still ahead, something borrowed, something blues. Cher rocks the rafters at the showbiz wedding of the decade. Stay with us. We have been invited to some way out weddings in a dazzling decade of lifestyles. But for sheer extravagance, none can eclipse the sensational ceremony you are about to witness. The groom was the multi-millionaire owner of John Paul Mitchell Beauty System's hair care products. A man with the ultimate rags to riches story. Though you may recognize John Paul from his television commercials, you might not know that he once scavenged redeemable cans to buy food and he had to live out of a broken down car. From the gutter to glitz, an incredible reversal of fortune made him co-founder and boss of a beauty care empire generating more money than some third world countries. JP, as good friends call him, tied the knot at his California home. A brand new $10 million, 20,000 square foot mega mansion atop 10 oceanfront Malibu acres. So what if the house wasn't quite ready? JP was more than ready to marry lovely Eloise Brody. Even if it meant guests would have to party hardy amongst the construction. Everybody wanted to come to our wedding, all of our friends, no matter where we had it. And since this house was built, as a dream house, just a fabulous, you know, house to go to. That was a dream come true. And since Eloise, much of Eloise was built into the house, we had to have the wedding here even though it wasn't finished. JP's not kidding about Eloise being built into the home. Witness that bust in the Grand Salon. He decided to make the fireplace uh, a cast of myself, and then with this gorgeous hair coming from each side to uh, the middle. John Paul is so romantic that he would think about something like that. Chivalry is still alive. Thank goodness. Shadow de Joria is a personalized pleasure palace custom built for comfort. The style is Mediterranean, and when it comes to rooms with a view, it doesn't get better than this. I designed the house in such a way that from almost every room you could look out at the ocean, and those that don't see the ocean see the beautiful mountains behind them. The entire house is lit that way also. There's plenty of windows everywhere. So during the day, there's little to no reason to have a light turned on. Elegant and airy, lavishly appointed amenities include such one-of-a-kind indulgences as Eloise's boudoir, with a sunken tub overlooking the ocean. The master bedroom is a real showstopper, complete with a custom-designed canopy bed. The bedroom is very romantic and extremely comfortable. You feel like you're in some place special. To me, going in that bedroom or sleeping in that bed will be like walking into paradise and going to heaven. We wanted this house to feel so homey that it would be not like a hotel, but like a real home. So one of the criteria that everyone had to meet was whatever room you do, whatever piece of furniture, whatever ceiling, must be warm feeling. A warm Mediterranean house that makes everyone feel special. Their big day began at dawn with a scurry of caterers, florists, ballets, chefs, and a rock star. The Who's vocalist was up with the lark testing acoustics. Everything I need. Roger planned a special performance for the ceremony at high noon. With so much to do in so little time, arriving guests had no idea of the last minute goings on behind the scenes. The Texas Bell's gown and veil was still being adjusted moments before midday. As the clock struck 12, the bow she met on a blind date made an official announcement. Showtime! The icebreaker set the tone of the moment as the groom took center stage. Flanking him were officiating minister Marjo Gortner and best man John Capra. Amid an unconventional ceremony in which the bride sashayed along a balcony, her grand entrance and walk down the aisle was as traditional as it ever gets. Above the sparkling Pacific, bride and groom exchanged solemn vows before Marjo made it official. It is a great joy and pleasure that I now pronounce you husband and wife. Yes, you can kiss the bride!
JP pulled out all the stops for the lavish reception with 750 magnums of crystal at $200 a pop, plus 10 pounds of $100 an ounce beluga. Those champagne wishes and caviar dreams don't come cheap. Behind the scenes, a world-famous chef and a good pal of the groom was busy rattling those pots and pans. JP loves, uh, you know, vegetarian dishes, so we have an asparagus risotto, we are making sweet potato raviolis, and then we're gonna have our garlic chicken with mashed potatoes, chinois lamb chop, so we have a lot to eat. Dessert really took the cake. A slice from a six-tier, 12-foot-high wedding cake, plus a sweet treat handmade by yet another master chef. So what these are, these are um, images of John Paul and Eloise that we created with the finest French chocolate. And I added one full bottle of Louis XIII cognac to all the chocolates. It's $1,800 a bottle. Now you know why I ate eight of them. Star chef from Hollywood's most acclaimed restaurants worked at Bacurian Wizardry alongside a small army of apprentices. I should have rented a warehouse because I brought so many cooks in for this party. No introductions were needed for the celebrity guests who pointed out that even by rich and famous standards, very few society weddings would ever compare for unabashed opulence. Though unique and offbeat, tradition wasn't totally thrown out the window. For the reception, close your eyes, the bride changed into a peekaboo outfit. There was something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blues. Nowhere stepped an R&B great to show them how to really get down. in full swing, bride and groom slipped away to a honeymoon crossing the country by train. God bless you all, thank you. Thank you very much. From scavenging redeemable cans from the garbage and living out of a car to flying away from the wedding of the decade. Only in America, folks, our love and congratulations to JP and the lovely Eloise. Directly ahead, the air up there for NBA superstar Hakeem Olajuwon. His incredible journey from Lagos, Nigeria, to become center for the Houston Rockets. Taste and enjoy the good life with our Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous Cookbook. Packed with over 200 personal recipes from the stars, it reveals their at-home entertaining secrets from barbecues to banquets. The Rich and Famous Cookbook is 288 pages of glorious color for just $24.95. Get your copy of The Ultimate in Good Taste because you deserve to live the good life. Available now at your favorite local bookstore. Combine the movies Coming to America and The Air Up There, and you still don't do justice to the real-life story of NBA superstar Hakeem Olajuwon. The 6-foot, 11-inch Houston rocket was discovered hooping it up in his homeland of Lagos, Nigeria, back in 1979. Equally surprising as American talent scouts scouring West African villages was Hakeem's meteoric ascent to the top stateside. He might never have been signed for a $25 million contract with the Rockets had he not seen the light at age 17. A gifted athlete who excelled at soccer, volleyball, and track, it took just one slam dunk to make the gentle giant court a whole new future. Immediately I picked up basketball, I fell in love with the sport, I dropped all the other sports. After beating all comers on the entire African continent, Hakeem's team was headed for Nigeria's top college, or so he thought. A few words in the locker room changed all that. This was the coach of the opponent, and he wanted to talk to me in private. It was uh, an advice that this is your last year in high school. Don't go to school, the college in Nigeria. Go to the college in the United States. Before his size 17 sneakers landed in the Lone Star State, Hakeem nixed four other colleges, including St. John's, something to do with the Big Apple's winters. 
college basketball's player of the decade moved on up to the big time without missing a shot. Hakeem lives in a style that other NBA superstars might call modest. While planning his dream home, a suburban bachelor pad suited him just fine. I like to get what you need functional, not just all the big space where you're going to use and becomes just a place to maintain or a waste. I like everything functional. It's very small, very compact, nice design. Just something more that's very nice. So, but I know in the future we need a bigger space, a home, and a yard. Looking ahead to extending his family, he bought a plot just outside of town and began building a lakeside fantasy palace. The project began with a two-bedroom guest house as his temporary digs until the blueprint of the 15,000 square foot extravaganza becomes a reality. A free throw from where the big house will stand, the style is Elijah Wan, classic lines meeting contemporary decor straight out of Africa. Until its completion, his daughter remains in Los Angeles with her mother, and Akeem commutes to the West Coast during off-season. On her fifth birthday, doting dad's big surprise was a private party at a petting zoo for Abisola and a hundred of her best friends. Serious about parenting, Akeem is determined not to allow his fame and fortune to go to his young daughter's head. Your kids are your, the representation of you when they are well-behaved, politeness and you know mannerable to compliment the parents I say wow your parents is doing a good job raising you named the nba's best dressed man by cbs sports and gentlemen's quarterly akeem says his sense of style was born from desperation unable to buy off the rack clothes to fit him he began making his own garments from an eclectic selection of fabrics it was very difficult for me to find fabrics that i like then i run into scarves, like Chanel scarves, Hemis scarves, Jennifer Sachi scarves. But these scarves are big, but not big enough for a shirt. And I buy these scarves and buy a plain fabric and blend it all together. So I start designing with scarves. A devout Muslim, Hakeem lives by the laws of Islam. Five times each day, he kneels towards Mecca in prayer. The second pillar of Islam is to establish worship. That's a, a, an obligation, so you have no choice. When it's time for prayer, you drop whatever you're doing and go to pray. The $25 million man has good reason to remain true to his West African roots. Success comes naturally to Nigeria's own Hakim Olajuwon, a name that translates to always on top. The stars are taking a bite out of big business. The bottom line on entertainment's shrewdest entrepreneurs. Celebrities with fabulous fortunes making multi-million dollar investments in namesake restaurants and bars across the country. But first, a day in the life of early bird Spencer Christian. Network Television's morning weatherman takes you behind the scenes of Good Morning America. Stay with us. Born on a stormy Monday in the rural South, a kid from a poor black neighborhood grew up to bring sunshine into the lives of Americans coast to coast. As a top weatherman for Network Morning News, Spencer Christian proved that what counts isn't where you come from, only where you're headed. The evening news in Richmond, Virginia and Baltimore, Maryland taught him to predict jet streams and cold fronts, but he didn't forecast that his days would begin quite so early. On a day, that um, it's not too out of the ordinary. I would get up at 4.30, be out of the house by about 5.15, and in the studio by 5.45. At that point, uh, I get a briefing on the weather from my meteorologist on staff who's been in since about 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it yeah. looks like it will become a hurricane show. Okay. Makeup time. His co-hosts are Charles Gibson and Joan London. Joan's lucky she's going on vacation next week. 
<laughs> we'll miss you, Joan. <laughs> oh, I'll miss you, too. <laughs> a briefing by his producer leaves just enough time for quick breakfast and the horoscope. Okay. Moments That's before airtime, the national forecast is updated yet again. I probably understand the weather as well as anyone who does it on television. Because I've been a weather caster for 20 years, I have a good, sound, working knowledge of weather far better than uh, the layperson. He should. Spencer also paid his television dues reporting general news and never forgot the reporter's credo. Get it first and get it right. Accuracy at second-guessing Mother Nature won him the right to tell it like it's gonna be in a book spelling out the secrets of weather prediction. Serious about storm watches and hurricane alerts, Spencer is low pressure on the set. Charlie Gibson makes sure of that. Welcome to the lifestyles of the rich and famous, or in the case of Spencer Christian, the lifestyles of the well-to-do and known. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 20. White shot first. Behind the success of Good Morning America, it's trio of early birds. We happen to be very fortunate at Good Morning America that we have three uh, primary on-air people who have a nice chemistry. We enjoy working together. We genuinely like each other. We care about each other. Thanks, Ann. It's eight minutes after the hour. Time for the very rich and very famous Spencer <laughs> Christian. The best part of the job is actually being on the air and knowing that I'm serving a useful purpose in the lives of a lot of people. When the unexpected happens in live broadcasts, and it does, Spencer knows better than to let an ad-lib opportunity slide. One of the funniest things that happened recently was during uh, Good Morning America's trip to Australia and New Zealand. I was on a beach in Sydney, and there was a, a polar bear group, you know, a group of swimmers who go out in the winter to swim in the cold waters. And as I finished the interview with the group and they turned to run into the water, one of the guys lost his trunks. And, and I had to come up with something to say at that moment, so I said, this gives new meaning to the expression down under. He also turns the other cheek when taken off his usual assignment. I get a, a lot of assignments outside weather. Yeah, they have nothing to do with weather. Uh -huh. So I'm constantly on the road doing uh, reports on various topics. Over 60 miles per hour. As you pointed out earlier, the most serious fires raging out of control here. Likely to pop up anywhere on television, Spencer hosted a popular game show on BET. By late afternoons, he said goodbye to GMA and is back at his sprawling home in suburban New Jersey. Chateau Christian is a place to kick back and relax in. It's comfortable and casual, much like the man. The basement houses his prized wines. A serious connoisseur for 15 years, his vintage Bordeaux's date back to 1872. Rain or shine, Spencer's toast is to his relationship with wife Diane. It takes a lot of caring and a lot of sensitivity, a lot of uh, investment of time. Just because you take vows and promise to love each other forever doesn't mean it's going to always be that way. You have to work at it. Father knows best, and not just about the weather. Take it from Spencer's grown-up children, Jason and Jessica. If you give your kids a lot of love and attention, and if you invest a good deal of yourself in your kids, as opposed to investing your checking account in your kids, I think they'll turn out okay. The people who are a part of my family uh, are really the foundation of my life, and um, uh, they are the things that, that keep me centered and help me define who I am. For Spencer Christian, the forecast is for low pressure, clear skies, smooth sailing, and should there be a cloud, it's sure to have a silver lining. Directly ahead, Hollywood's Ted Shackelford discovers the wonder of Copenhagen, the world's first amusement park that beat Disney by almost a century. America may have cornered the market on theme parks, but Walt Disney sure didn't invent them. While the West was still being won, the civilized Danes created magic in the heart of their kingdom. Action-packed Tivoli Gardens took its first Krona for a fun ride back in 1843 and has delighted kids and the young at heart ever since. On its 150th anniversary, the world's first amusement park celebrated in a manner befitting its age, reserved merriment. Among revelers from around the world who came to salute the Grand Dame was a special couple from Hollywood. On a second honeymoon through Scandinavia, Ted Shackelford was given the VIP tour by Danish-born wife Annette Wolf. I think 
think what Tilda really, for me, embodies are the gardens. They are spectacular. They're just lovely. More so than being solely an amusement park. Because when you walk around and you see the incredible environment of flowers and trees, it has beautiful fountains, it has beautiful kind of archways of flowers, um, it has the beautiful ponds with floating lilies and it's just unique in that sense, more so than, than any other uh, park in the world, I think. The winning combination of fun and flora is said to have inspired Hans Christian Andersen to write his Nightingale fairy tale. A local publisher dreamed up the idea and sold the concept to King Christian VIII. His pitch was a Danish version of, if you build it, they will come, and proved right on the money. The architectural masterpiece has since welcomed 275 million visitors from the four corners of the earth. Don't think rinky-dink. More than just hundreds of rides, it's a cultured comfort zone for all ages, boasting no less than 28 first-class restaurants. But the park took on a special personality at night. Pagoda was lit with so many lights, I've never seen so many lights. And the galleon, the Spanish galleon, a blaze with lights. We salute Copenhagen's original theme park. After giving fun to so many millions, Tivoli Gardens is ready to delight whole new generations. There's no business like show business. But for a new breed of entrepreneur and entertainer, the bottom line is there's no business like their own business. The shrewdest stars are making even more millions by opening up shop and trading off their famous names. All it takes is superstar status as an actor, athlete, or big-name entertainer, and the conviction that fans will go to their namesake joints. The payoff buys an even bigger slice of the good life, cash comparable to hitting entertainment's jackpot. Make no mistake, the stars are buying into America, in everything from restaurants to dance studios. Some prefer to lend their names to businesses owned and run by others, but an increasing number are rolling up their sleeves and getting involved in the day-to-day -day running and publicizing of their investments. Kenny Rogers continues to generate fabulous fortunes as an entertainer, yet the gambler put his own millions, as well as his famous name on the line, for a chain of wood-roasted chicken restaurants. Singers who want long careers, need to get involved in things that don't require them to sing. And you really can do that only after you've attained a certain amount of success. If we say we cook chicken the way it used to be cooked 200 years ago, because actually we're putting it on a spit and we're rotating it over the fire, over an open fire, the difference between ours and 200 years ago is it's got beautiful herbs and seasoning in it, and it is truly, I think, the best tasting chicken that I've ever eaten. Customers also get to glimpse Kenny's music memorabilia and maybe even meet the star himself. He pops in unannounced at 100 outlets in 24 states. But unlike other restaurant tours, Kenny is as busy as ever performing in concerts and making movies. It gives him an incredible edge in the marketplace. Lifestyles returns in just a moment with the bottom line on the marriage of showbiz and big business, and you won't believe the millions involved. Don't miss the next Lifestyles as we travel the corridors of wealth and wonder. Bob Hope's biggest fans salute America's ambassador of good humor. The Vicki Lawrence Laughathon, comic cut-ups you won't see on her TV show. All the stars come out to play at a winter wonderland where skiing is believing. Kid Power, a sensational shocker on the big bucks generated by the smallest spenders. Plus, former teen heartthrob James Darren shares his new life. All on the next Lifestyles. Champagne wishes. What's good for big business is good for show business. That's the bottom line on the celebrity buying of America. Actress and singer Debbie Allen became an entertainer entrepreneur when she and her NBA superstar husband made an investment. Norm Nixon says their hot and happening restaurant is a real peach. Georgia is basically a, a southern restaurant. Most of the dishes are traditional southern dishes. And basically, what we tried to create in Georgia is a nice, pleasant, comfortable atmosphere to serve good food. In a restaurant like this, if you had to build this restaurant from ground up, you would spend a few million dollars. Fortunately, there was a restaurant here, so most of the changes were cosmetic. 
those changes still cost a small fortune. So they took on limited partners from their showbiz pals, Denzel Washington, Wesley Snipes, Eddie Murphy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Connie Stevens. Limited partners uh, is just what it said. Their liability is limited. For example, uh, if you were putting together a deal and you invested $30,000 in this restaurant, that's your liability limit, $30,000. Norman Debbie keep Georgia on their mind, while another actor in the restaurant business has long gone from mash to cash. Wayne Rogers' bar and grill is a showbiz hotspot that's seen the competition come and go. So restaurants are popular, and then they fall out of favor, and they may get popular again. I think that's more true when you have a lot of competition. Wayne was a pioneer celebrity entrepreneur who proved it could be done successfully and with style. With a menu suited to Tinseltown sophisticates, good lighting and cool music, that property is now worth many times the one and a half million dollar investment made back in the 80s by Wayne and television producer Paul Witt. Other restaurants with famous owners include the chic new Miami eatery, Alioli, co-owned by singer Gloria Estefan. There's Robert De Niro's hot spots in Los Angeles and New York, Chelsea Central, owned by silent partner Treat Williams, and Patrick Swayze's trendy Mulholland Drive. I even dabbled myself, a modest piece of tattoo located in Beverly Hills and the Big Apple. Some celebrity owners seek more than just a place where they're sure to get a table. For the king of the blues, it was a jumping little joint where he could do what he does best. At BB's Blues Club and Restaurant in Memphis, Tennessee, good times are always on the menu. It's uh, something that I can really be proud of because it's something that has happened to me that's beyond my wildest dream I ever had when I was walking the streets, especially Bill Street, and exploring Memphis when I first came here in 46. Never dreamed anything like this would ever happen. And today, it is happening. Restaurants are only one way that stars buy into America. A showman turned entrepreneur trumped the competition with a $365 million bid that won him an entire hotel and casino. Flushed with his very own piece of Atlantic City, Mighty Merv then plunked down $107 million for a landmark West Coast hotel. The man with the Midas touch then bought an amazing riverboat casino for $18.5 million. That means somebody won a jackpot. The list goes on. Prince's purple power spans Minneapolis to Los Angeles locations of his glam slam nightclubs. An NBA superstar owns a trucking fleet and even drives one of the 18-wheelers off-season. A former Jefferson's and 227 sitcom star is the proud owner of a Los Angeles theater complex worth over $3 million. Marla Gibbs says it's all hers for one very good reason. Not being able to find investors, I'm the owner. Still looking for investors, but I am the owner. Built by Howard Hughes, the lovingly renovated 62-year-old landmark also features a thriving art gallery and a non-profit performing arts school. Talk about moving on up. Just up the road is a supper club that Marla also happens to own. The half-million-dollar investment is a labor of love, even though it's unlikely to make the fortune 500 list. But if it takes care of itself, that'll be all right with me. Comedian Joan Rivers traded jokes for customized costume jewelry in her own line of clothing. Selling on the QVC shopping network, she hit the mother load. I think the first weekend we did over a million dollars. And I remember getting back into the car, going home and going, how much? How much? Three years later, it's a $60 million business. Can we count? Telesales have also turned other celebrities into instant mighty moguls, from Ivana to Cher. One star business that really took off made Hollywood and Wall Street take notice. Following the success of the Hard Rock Cafe, such chic eateries as Planet Hollywood are the hot new businesses of the 90s. The multi-million dollar gold mine is headed up by three of Planet Earth's highest paid movie stars, Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Sly Stallone. Planet Hollywood is a success really because it's pure escapism. It's eating wonderful food, 
around extraordinary surroundings. There's absolutely nothing like this on the planet. There's, there's no restaurant or nightclub or museum or anything that, that combines everything this you know, restaurant does. Co-owner Bruce also gets to moonlight as a singer and host star-studded extravaganzas. Incredibly, each of the six Planet Hollywoods gross over $10 million a year. And the idea is to have approximately 40 Planet Hollywoods uh, in the next five years. You heard it. Coast to coast and around the world, the stars are buying up America. But as any economist will tell you, such homespun investments are actually good for the national economy. People like their favorite stars. People have money to spend and will spend it anyway. Simple arithmetic. With surefire success guaranteed, the merging of showbiz and big biz is inevitable. Ultimately, entertainer entrepreneurs will just keep on getting more and more successful. And that's the bottom line. Thank you for joining us. I'm Robin Leach with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams. We all look forward to being with you on the next edition of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Entrust your vacation to American Airlines Flyaway Vacations, where one phone call brings you convenient, quality vacation packages and low airfares to top destinations in America and around the world. It's a land of make-believe. Dreams become reality, and we can dance away to the rhythm of the night. When the time is right, you'll know, and the feelings start to show. There's magic everywhere, and love is in the air. It's the lifestyle where the neighbors go to play. It's the lifestyle. It's a dream that far. In the rain, the winds that blow, it's the, the test of time. In the playground of my mind, where you leave your cares behind, there's no trouble you will find. Where we are going to, waiting there for me and you, is the lifestyle. Where the famous go to play, it's the lifestyle. It's a dream not far away. consideration furnished by Vaseline Lip Therapy. New conditioning formulas in great new forms. Protection that lasts six hours long. Vaseline Lip Therapy. St. Ives Swiss Formula Hair Repair returns problem hair to its natural beauty. Swiss Formula Hair Repair. First aid for your hair from St. Ives. Vicks Vapor Inhaler for fast effective relief of nasal congestion. Easy to carry and easy to use anytime, anywhere. Take a breather with a Vicks Vapor Inhaler. Paul Mitchell. You may see our name in the drugstore or supermarket. Don't be confused. We only guarantee Paul Mitchell when you buy it in a salon.